Globe studying through our eyes. Today we're going to talk about the Princess Dragon Wood Stove. Here is our boss, better known as the Silver Silver Dragon Princess <laughs> Dragon. No. <laughs> Fire Otherwise known as Princess Dragon from Silver Fire or some wood stove company overseas because Silver Fire seems to be the company that buys them and then gives them out here. So we've had it for about two months now, and we gave you an original update with the Princess Dragon and let you know how it went for there, but from then on, but uh, we've had it for two months now, and as I said, it has been our boss, so if we go anywhere, we need to make sure we're back. If before I uh, had the damper installed. I, we were only able to leave for about three to four hours, maybe even less than that. And now it's lasting from four and a half to five. Um, we installed the damper and originally could not use it because I was afraid that maybe some CO would back up into here and nobody wants that. So we got a battery operated CO detector and installed that recently so we were able to play with the damper finally. It works great. We close it down and close the two dampers here down and it lasts four and a half to five hours. It originally said that it would contain a fire for 13 hours in the directions. I would love for the company to come and show me how they do that. That'd be great. I mean, I've had people that say the wood, it's wet, it's this, it's that. If this was perfect wood, I still don't see how this would last for 13 hours. But anyway, it's been great for what we've needed it for. Um, below, temp below zero weather, um, we were in here and woke up and it was 41 was the lowest and that was on the night that we had let it go a little longer than we were supposed to. But other than that, it's been great. Today after, I think we got like four, five, six inches here in upstate New York, we've been keeping it 65 to 70 in here without even trying. And it's nice and comfy all around and it's been about 30 degrees for the past 24 hours give or take right now it's a little under nothing's really melting but it's been a great experience and we've learned a lot along the way um, from playing with the door because <clears throat> for some reason it slides up if you don't have it in the right position and we were over tightening it so I tightened the handle, I tightened the damper we started loading it more carefully rather than jamming it all in there and these are each steps that we learned slowly this isn't like a one time thing it took like two months to finally figure out all its little flaws and characteristics and you know like I said just like a boss bunnies are coming to visit me hey, baby. Mm, hi, Douglas and Leon YouTube first <laughs> 
This is Leon's favorite spot, right in front of the fire. Ours too, kinda. So anyway, back to the point of the video. Instead of cute little bunnies. Sorry, I got distracted again. They're just so cute. Um, as I said, it's been months since we've learned everything here and there. Um, last night I was actually up on the scaffolding again, <clears throat> taking the cap off of the chimney because it started to get so corroded with whatever. Um, I think it may be some bark that we might use to start the fires or some paper, um, the chicken wire that allows nothing to get into it is just a little too small I think maybe so as I said that's just another learning experience when we first got it it was kind of disappointing everything in the inside supposedly was not supposed to come out of place and everything was out of place uh, we wrote to the guy and it said, you know, everything came out of place and it looks kind of rough and beat up and there was rust on it and it looked like there was ashes in it, dings and dents. Um, the top piece of fiberglass insulation rope came out. It didn't even look like it was cemented in. So did the, the inner circle one. So I had to go through and do that again. That was also an experience. But pretty easy, so you can do it yourself. Don't get someone to come in and do it for you. I went down to the local GNH and bought some cement and bought some fiberglass insulation. Laid the cement, laid the insulation exactly in the groove, and you know it works. So that was another learning experience, which I'm glad to have had. As I said, when we first got it, it was in shambles, so we were disappointed. Finally, we put everything back and got it to where it was supposed to be. Um, it was actually quite more intricate than I thought it was going to be. It was almost like the, the perfect puzzle pieces had to fit in there. Um, overall, it's... A great stove other than the little hassles here and there and things that we had to do ourselves in order to make it like it should have been oh, I yeah, feel the, the leg was messed up the leg was messed up it didn't come with the correct screws and nuts so I had to go to the local hardware store and find the correct screws and as I said these are out-of-country stoves so of course here in America, we don't use the same systems as everybody else for some reason, and it was in metric. So luckily, the store had a little tiny section of metric bolts, and I measured it with the little measurement tool they have there at the store, and luckily they had it, and it worked. So, um, after we got everything fixed, uh, as I said, in general, it's great. We love the open flame, and it's really easy to clean. All it takes is a paper towel and some water, dip it in the ash, and rub it off, and repeat. Dip the water, dip it in the ash, and it'll clean itself crystal clean, just like it looks, you know, if, if you were to use some chemical stuff on glass. Um, I like the control that I have with it once we have finally installed the damper. Uh, the bottom damper is, is six holes that are about half an inch wide and allows for max airflow. Opening that all the way up, we only do that when we have more paying full attention to the stove and we're here for like five ten minutes and paying attention to it because if that's left all the way open flames will shoot up through the pipe because that thing gets so roaring so it's definitely touchy I remember as a kid being really able to control it fully open would give you a nice fire that you'd want not a chimney fire 
But uh, as I said, each stove has its characteristics and you have to figure them out. It's got the top damper. You shut that and these dampers on the inside move from side to side and they meet up with holes that allow airflow through the top for a secondary burn. The stove has pretty decent emissions. Once it's flaming pretty good, you can barely see any smoke coming out of the top. Um, a lot of new eight or new generation stoves have the secondary burn and they're really good. It also has the cooktop and the burner top and we've used that almost every time we've cooked a meal and it's been great and there's plenty of space it's almost like having three burners uh, we found that anywhere on the whole burner will boil and if you move it from spot to spot it'll boil quicker of course because it'll absorb more heat, more heat. Uh, we have this grate here I'll stand up and shut that down for you. Has a nice little locking mechanism back here. Simple, easy, lift it up, shut it down. It's got a nice design. Plus, this is like a lesser of a cook stove. If you don't want to boil anything, if you need to cook something for a long time, you throw it up on top of there and that works great as well. <clears throat> some things that we did learn the hard way again of course we bought a backboard and it was too close or the pipe and the wood stove in general were too close to the backboard and it actually started smoking and I had to chuck the uh, logs out one day and fix that. So what I did is I came in and installed a piece at the top that was about a foot longer I'd say and moved the wood stove out more and we haven't had any problems since. The damper was a definite do. Um, I looked online for a while and I saw do don't new stoves don't need it blah blah blah. I figured if I put it in I didn't need it I wouldn't need it but if I put it in and it would help it would help so I ended up doing it and I'm very very glad that I did because it made the stove last way longer as far as burn time and it allowed us to keep the temperature in here a lot better it also traps BTU's heat from going up out the chimney and it stays in the stove and in the bottom of the pipe. <clears throat> so that was a great addition, an easy addition, cheap addition. It was only about eight bucks and the install was simply taking a pin marker and marking a hole, drilling in and then making sure the rod was exactly in the center coming out the other side, make another pin hole, drill another pilot hole and stick the rod through, stick the uh, cast iron plate through and then stick the rod through and you're done. Reinstall the pipe as is and you're good to go. That's our Silver Dragon, Silver Princess from Silver Fire, Silver, Silver. Princess Dragon from Silver Fire. <laughs> That's our Princess Dragon from Silver Fire Review. Um, star wise, I, used, I like to use the scale from 1 to 10. Um, when we first got it, we weren't pleased. And the company it came from wasn't very good, so that brings it down a little bit. But overall, we're happy. For now, we wish we got a bigger one, but that's not the stove's fault. So I'm going to stick with an 8 out of 10. As I said, we wish we had got a bigger one because 
this doesn't hold the heat as long. I feel as if a bigger one would hold more heat, more cast iron. That would help out a little bit. So, house-wise, it'll burn you out of your house. Yurt-wise, it'll keep you comfy. And all in all, happy once you figure out the boss's little quirks. So thanks for watching. Um, if you're interested in seeing about all the stuff we went through with the stove when we first got it, we have a video of that. And stay tuned. Ask any questions you like about the stove or about the yurt or anything in general. And we'd be glad to answer. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace.